In Manverse Machine, you will see an image of the moon that has already been marked by a computer algorithm. However, we think you can do a much better job. The craters that the computer has tried to mark are as show up as purple circles. These are overlaid on an image from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orb Orbiter, similar to the images that you've seen in the Simply Craters app. Now you can edit these cr uh, crater markings by clicking and dragging a mark to move it around. So I'll center this over that crater. When you're done editing, click back on the image for all the markings to reappear. You can also change the size of a crater marking when you click it and drag, pulling the rim, making it larger or smaller. If the circle turns red, that means it's too small. It doesn't have a, a crater that's large enough to be cataloged. In order to delete a circle that doesn't seem to be associated with a crater at all, just double click to delete. Or you can use the delete marking tool over on the side and delete a crater. Return to mark hitting mark craters in order to move and adjust the purple craters. So I'm going to move a few more to what I think are valid craters. This one can be resized for a larger crater. I don't even know what that one was, so I'm going to delete it. And that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. This one I can move and try and shrink. It's too small, and I'm going to delete that one. I don't even know what it was marking over here, so I'll delete those. So there are a few that I've kept, modified, and deleted a bunch that didn't seem to line up with actual craters. So now I'm at a point where I agree with all these purple marks, but I'm ready to add some craters that the computer missed. For example, this is a pretty large crater that was completely missed. To learn how to do that, continue watching uh, for the next section for instructions on using the Mark Craters and Mark Feature Tools. This, this includes a guide on how to identify craters so that you can correct the incorrect marks much better as they're made by the computer, as well as accurately add your own craters. If you're already familiar with that process from Simply Craters, then go ahead and get started. This section of the tutorial is on the Mark Craters and Mark Features buttons in CosmoQuest Mapper projects. I will be using Moon Mappers as an example, but this method works the same for all of the Mappers projects. You get started uh, with an image here of the moon, uh, the moon's surface, where a sun marker, this little yellow guy here, has been placed indicating the direction from which the sun is shining. You will use this to help you identify your craters. Uh, to start, you want to click on the Mark Creators button, make sure that's selected. Uh, to see what any of these buttons do at any point, you can double click the button and a description of what it does will come up. Click back to return. So we're on Mark Creators. Uh, as you mouse over the image, the section that's under your cursor will be zoomed in at either the top right or the top left of the image to give you a closer look. It'll move out of your way when your cursor approaches it so that you can see what's underneath. So let's pick a nice sharp crater to start with. You want to identify the rim or edge of the entire crater. Now pay attention to where the sun is. In this image it's coming from the right, which is where that sun icon is. This means that going right to left, the rim leading up to the crater, so right here, just barely see it, is a little brighter. And then you transition to darkness as you go into the crater due to the rim casting a shadow. And then it gets light again as you get the wall that's facing the sun. And as you exit that sharp crater, you get another shadow as the rim casts a shadow on the outside. So that's uh, what your crater looks like. That's one way to identify a sharp crater using the sunlight. So to mark it, you need to click, figure out where the center of the crater is, and this is where the zoom tool comes in handy. Click and drag your cursor until the size of that circle matches the rim of the crater. 
just like that. Let go of the mouse and uh, check your marking. If the circle stayed red when it hit the crater, so if I tried it on this one, if you're on the rim of the crater and the circle stays red, it'll disappear. That means that it, the crater is too small. It's smaller than 18 pixels across and we don't want anything that small. Once it's big enough to turn green, then you're okay. Now don't try and overestimate the size of your crater just to make it turn green. Get as close to the rim or the edge of the crater as you can. Uh, one way to describe the crater rim, so I'm going to delete this for a second, one way to describe the crater rim is that it's the edge of that dark area on one side and the light area on the other side of the crater. And that again works best on newer, sharper craters. So I'm going to make that touch where the shadow and light end and begin. If you want to change your marking, you just click and drag from the center to move it around your image. Uh, you can also click and drag on the rim to resize it, make it bigger or smaller. Click off the circle to return to normal and mark your next, your next feature. To delete it, you can either double click the circle or you can use the delete marking tool on the side to delete. Let's go back to the mark creator tool and actually keep that one there. Try and get it close to perfect as possible. So now again, pay attention to the shadow and sunlight as you're looking for more craters. Here's the same pattern of shadow to sunlight across the crater as our first one. So we'll mark this one. You want to look for sharp craters such as these, as well as craters that are more faded or harder to see. Uh, a good example in this picture is this circular depression that I'm circling right here. So here's the center of it. Again, you have that pattern of dark to light across the depression, which tells us that this is probably a very old eroded crater. So we have to estimate the center of it as well as the rim of this crater. And again, I'm going to use where it transitions from light to shadow as my guide for where the crater rim is. So let's try and mark this very old eroded crater. Say right about there. Now we also want you to mark any other interesting features that you see in the image as well using the mark feature tool. So you click on that to get started and I see something over here that looks a bit strange. It's light on this side and dark on the other side which makes me think it's something that's sticking up off the surface and so that's not a crater that's something else. So I'm going to click it to drop the marker and it'll ask me what are you looking for? What, what do you think it is? It can be a light albedo feature, where albedo is, is the brightness of, of the surface, a dark albedo feature, so a dark colored piece of surface, boulder field, so something that's rock, something that's sticking up could be a boulder field, a bullseye or concentric crater, uh, a chain of craters, or unknown, something really weird you're not sure what to describe, how to describe it. Um, since there's a couple of these little protrusions, I'm going to go with boulder field. Looks like we've got a few boulders and hit continue to keep the mark. Now we can also move this marking around if I want to by clicking and dragging on it. And this also gives you a little tag reminding you of what you called it, what you clicked it as. You can delete it with a double click as before or with the delete marking tool as before. I'm going to go ahead and Leave that one there and mark some of these other boulders. You can change the category of feature by triple clicking. So quickly clicking it three times, it lets you uh, change what object it is. But notice that it also moves the marking just a little bit. So once you've hit continue, you want to make sure to move your marking back on top of whatever it was you saw. 
So now uh, I'm going to go back to the Mark Crater tool and mark as many of these large circular features as I can find. Okay, so I think I've taken my time and found all the craters above 18 pixels uh, that I can easily identify. Um, before you finish up, you want to see if the image has any of these things, linear features, anything odd, or if you get to an image and it's just a bad image, uh, click bad image and, and move on. I don't think there are any of these unusual features uh, in this image, so I won't be clicking any of those. If you want to temporarily remove the markings uh, to see the original image underneath, you click turn markings off, see if you missed anything. Uh, don't worry, your work is still saved, just click turn markings on to bring them back. When you're done, you want to click done working, and that will submit your image to the database, uh, submit all your markings, and bring you a new image. For examples of uh, some of the different features that you may come across in your mapping, uh, you can go up to this menu here under Tutorials and click Feature Guide Basic, and that will give you uh, photographic examples of all of the other features you can, you can mark. Uh, it's helpful to keep that open in a separate tab so that you can check against it when you are marking.